All right. I love our theme music. Welcome, welcome everybody. Thank you for being here today. Uh, we'll slowly take our way through the intro slides here because we've still got a good number of people trickling in. Uh, apparently, this is a popular topic because uh, we had a lot of registrations for this compared to uh, some of our previous topics. So I'm looking forward to the engagement here, but I know we'll see these numbers continue to climb for a couple minutes. So with that, let's go ahead and get some introductory stuff out of the way. As usual, I am uh, your host for this Technically Speaking. My name is Josh Blaylock. I am the Chief Video Evangelist here at Jabra, and I am joined today by John Hand, uh, who will be presenting on the device management solution that we're going to be talking about. He'll, he'll give you a little bit more detail on the naming of that and, and what that looks like in just a second. And, uh, and then we will um, be having a demo as well at some point. So stay tuned for that. Um, this is the name of the game today, a new era of device management in the Jabra ecosystem. So if you are at all familiar with uh, our, our software offerings and the products that we have provided in the past for managing devices, you'll know that we do have a platform or two, a couple different tools out there. And uh, we are reimagining, we are reinventing and, uh, and, and shifting the way that all comes together. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Just to just to kind of set the table for this, this isn't something brand new we're announcing today. We actually uh, announced this maybe a little bit quieter than usual, but we announced it at Infocom a few months back. And so today we are really following up on that uh, quieter announcement to, to share with you exactly what we're talking about here, what this looks like, and what our vision is, uh, so, that, so that you've got a good handle on what that is as you, uh, as a customer, explore us as a, a solution or as a partner, um, as, as someone that you may be positioning in front of a customer. Either way, hopefully this gives you a good idea of where we're going uh, when it comes to managing devices in the Java ecosystem. Before we get into the topic itself, as usual, if you've been to one of these before, you're familiar with our, our housekeeping slide here, the, the rules of engagement or unrules of engagement, as you will, on the slide. Uh, but for those of you that haven't seen it, uh, we'll go over this really quickly for your benefit. We call this an unwebinar because uh, we want it to feel sort of like a webinar where you're learning something new uh, and getting information. Uh, but we don't want it to be too structured and where you you can't you have limited options for engaging with us. So within this session, your mics are automatically muted, but we strongly encourage you to turn on your webcam if you're comfortable with it, as we want to have a face to face here. And if you do have a question, you have a couple options. Pop in the chat or throw that hand up in teams and uh, and we will unmute you and uh, let you ask the question audibly which we love that because that's that's more of a back and forth conversation than just us talking at you. And that's what this is about, right? We wanna, we wanna get under the hood with some technical details and share stuff. But we also wanna get your perspectives and your feedback here. So uh, keep that in mind as we go through this. I already see cameras popping on all over the place. That's great, good to see you all. And then last, but certainly not least, well, as we have in previous sessions, we're giving away a very handy little hybrid work bundle. The Evolve 265 Flex, which has been a very popular choice among those who are looking for the ultimate in flexibility with, uh, with their headset, paired with the Dependent Cast 20, which is our, our personal uh, webcam that we put out there, 4K, packed full of AI capabilities. The last, technically speaking, session was actually on it, so go back and check that out if you missed it. Way more detail than I thought we'd actually be able to get to was in that session, so it's quite a workhorse. As far as how you're eligible for that, you're eligible for that just by being here. So we'll pull the attendance report after this is all done and then keep an eye on the email that you registered with because we will be uh, getting in touch with you that way to let you know if you have indeed won that bundle. With that, I'm going to share one last slide before I hand things over to John to, to introduce us to this new platform. Um, the next session is going to be in January. This is a monthly series, but next month is going to be December. And I'm losing track of how many holidays and celebrations happen at the end of December. And these things always happen at the end of the month. So with that in mind, uh, we are not going to be having a technically speaking session at the end of December. It will be in January, at the very end of January, as a matter of fact, January 31st. Uh, so if you uh, are interested in that topic, we're going to be talking about um, 
all the goodness, which we've already kind of been trickling some of that out into social media anyway, but all the new features and goodness that are have come in the last month or two with value packs or firmware updates, as many of you may know it as, uh, for the Panacast 50. And then there will be a few more value packs that are coming out in the next month or two or three uh, for the Panacast 50 and the Panacast 50 video bar system, unlocking a whole new set of features. There's a lot to unpack there. So if that's of interest to you, head over to the link now, jabber.com slash technically speaking, register for that session so that you've got it on your calendar. And, uh, and that way you'll know not to miss it because let's face it, a lot's going to happen over the next two months. So things might start to slip through the cracks. With that, I am going to stop sharing. I think I've said with that a few too many, too many times this session. I'm going to stop sharing at this stage. And, uh, and John, if you are ready, please uh, please take it away. Maybe quickly introduce yourself to uh, to the audience, and let's learn a bit about this new uh, new platform. Sure. With that, I'll take it away. Um, I see what you I did there. Had, see, yeah, I see what like, and I just had somebody walk through the office space, so the lights came back on. I am here in Copenhagen, Denmark. It's dark because I'm in Copenhagen, Denmark. It's only seven o'clock, but things get dark pretty early these days here. Um, so at some point my lights may go off once again and I'll be a little bit dimmed, but I um, hope the topic is bright anyway. My name is John Hand. I am the manager of the software global product managers here at Jabra. Um, not only do we manage the platform that we're about to show you today, we manage basically all the software that goes into all the great devices that we make. The headsets and the video bars, et cetera, et cetera, are all somehow under the remit of my team along with the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, program teams. I've brought along a very special guest today. Uh, one of the members of my team, Oves Akter, is here. He's a senior product manager on my team. He is the one at point for uh, the new um, platform that I'm about to show you. I'm still trying to keep the name a secret just for a couple more slides here. I don't know why, it's just kind of fun and Josh started that. So I'll, I, will, I will do that. Um, as we said, we are open for questions. I'll start to walk through, walk through some things here, some slideware, but that doesn't mean I need to get through the whole thing to get to the end before we, we have questions. Raise your hand, jump in, um, or pop something into the chat, and we either stop and answer that in the chat, or Ovase is also available to answer. Um, I will go through some introductory slides, and um, then actually Ovase will have some speaking time as well. So, okay, John. Yeah. I'm going to interrupt interrupt you one second and sure. just realize that I forgot to uh, pay, spend a little more time on the on the housekeeping slide. For those that have been in these previous sessions, you're you're familiar with the fact that the point here is to dig deeper technically. Well, we will definitely still try to st uh, strive to do as much technical depth as we can here today. I do want to remind everyone that none of these sessions are ever NDA sessions. So we're not going to be sharing NDA content. And as I always say, if you attempt to pull NDA content from us, we'll table that uh, that question or conversation for a, a follow up conversation with your group or uh, whatever the case may be in that situation. So that being said, this session is a little unique compared to some of the others because we will be giving you a little more vision and a little more what's coming in the near term as well as the longer term rather than let's dive deep into the nuts and bolts of something that's on the market in this moment, right? So keep that in mind. That's a little bit of the difference here, um, but I think it's a topic that is near and dear to many of your hearts, as I, as I see the number of people here would, would indicate that is the case. So we will uh, we'll proceed with that in mind. And again, I'll be fielding questions on the side in the chat. We'll bring them up as you raise your hand. John, sorry for interrupting, but I wanted to make sure we set the table there to make sure that the expectation was out there. No, thank you, and I appreciate that. I was I was going to bring it up later as well. So, um, like 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 Josh is saying, this is work in progress. We're pretty confident about our work in progress, but it's not an actual product in the market yet. We hope to get it to the market as quickly as possible. We'll talk a little bit more about where we're at and uh, show you some of the concepts that we have. Everything here is subject to change at least a little bit, but the basic pillars upon which we're building, the basic format upon which we're building, that should all remain the same. So that, that's why we feel comfortable coming to you today and talking about where we're headed here with our device management platform. Now, um, I was going to say I'll get started with a hype video. I think I've already done some hype, but I am going to get started 
with a short video here. Give me half a second to pull it up. Here we are. Jabra Plus for admins, our new hype video for it. Um, I'm sure you've got all the answers you need just from that one minute video. and <laughs> Probably don't need to go through the rest of this, but we will. So today we're talking about Jabra Plus for admins. Um, <clears throat> so I, I have four main areas that I'd like to cover today, along with the help from Ovase. Um, we're talking about Jabra Plus. What is Jabra Plus? And then what is Jabra Plus for admins? And then we're going to take a peek under the hood of this unreleased product. We'll go through some demos where we're at, some conceptual demos, some things that are actually built and being used by a couple of customers today. And then we'll talk about what's next and then, and then what? So this is great. And then when do we get it? All this kind of stuff that I'm sure people ask. So first, let me jump into what is Jabra Plus. Jabra Plus is our new cloud-based platform. It's our next generation platform. It's gonna power new experiences, connected experiences, and we're piloting that now. What does that mean actually? We have a Jabra Plus cloud platform and touch points. It has multi it's built upon um, a cloud platform where we manage usage data and device data. It's an API first methodology. Um, we have security and user, uh, excuse me, security built in, as well as user interactions. And we have four touch points, the first of which is Jabra Plus for admins, where we have our device management touch point built on our cloud platform. The second will be our Jabra Plus for partners, where we have a cloud API platform being built on top of our cloud platform. It's a great place for our partners to interact and connect to and integrate um, our our data. We'll also be building out our end user touch points as well, a new mobile app, a new desktop app. Those are all coming, but today what we're focused on here is the first one, Jabra Plus for admins. This is just a little more detail here. Jabra Plus for admins is both meeting room management, so the remote management of uh, meeting rooms, as well as the remote management of personal devices. I just want to be very clear that today we're going to mostly be focused in this area. Personal device management we can touch as, at the end of the presentation. The other three touch points are later. So we are focused right now on getting out a new meeting room management platform. And that's basically this. That's, that, that's what we're focused on today is our new cloud platform as well as Jabra Plus for admins, specifically around room management. And I want to talk a little bit about that cloud platform first, just to touch upon what is this cloud platform that we're talking about. We're building a new secure, scalable, multi-tenant cloud solution. It's built in Azure, on Azure IoT specifically. We're going to have robust federated identity management, including single sign-on, um, uh, which is something that we've that frankly out of out of everything that 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 we're offering that has been one of the major hurdles we've had with our current device management platform Jabra Express is to get that single sign on experience and we're going to have that with uh, Jabra Plus and as we said before it's an API first microservices architecture so everything here is API based that's why we call it a platform we're building our own products on top of that API platform as well as in the future enabling uh, integrators and cloud partners to build on top of our API platform. Let's get into the specifics here about 
what is Jabra Plus for admins? You will see this slide way too many times today. <laughs> I'll need to edit this deck a little. So what is it that we're building? We're building a new platform and our new platform is built upon four basic pillars of room management. Provision, uh, excuse me, provisioning, monitoring, managing, and updating. Provisioning meaning bringing new devices onto the Jabra Plus platform, right? And here we're talking specifically about our P50 and our P50 BBS in both MTR environments and in bring your own device environments. We're talking about monitoring. So monitoring room operations, getting real-time status of rooms from a single location to a whole entire organization. Um, we can check room and device details like Mac address, firmware versions, when, uh, when the camera was last seen, et cetera. And you can get alerts for these in real time. That's, that's, that's what we're building out. You can also manage here too. You can organize meeting rooms and spaces as needed. You can assign access rights to individual locations. This is a big plus for IT admins and AV integration partners. You can manage settings for either single or multiple devices in meeting rooms, including whiteboards and boundaries. We'll be able to access logs for troubleshooting and schedule device restarts. Um, and finally, the updating process. We can monitor firmware versions on devices. We can receive update notifications and efficiently update individual or multiple devices at once. And we can schedule firmware upgrades for optimal device maintenance. We'll show you a little bit about what all this means when we get to the demo time. I, I get the feeling that's going to be the meat of this conversation today. And here we hey, are. John, I'll jump in and yeah. uh, we'll, we'll throw a question in there that popped in the chat. Sure. Um, and it's about a pathway for migrating from Express to yep. to Plus. Is that anything we can speak to at this time? Well, it is certainly on our radar, right? We realize we've got quite um, quite a few customers using Express today, and we have to be clear about what that migration path looks like. We're building it. We don't have it here today, but we are building that because we are going to need to bridge that um, Express to Jabra Plus um, functionality. So. Uh, certainly on the radar. And then a follow up. Another question to that was that you did mention MTR and BYOD uh, Zoom rooms included. Um, Zoom room will be included. Yep. OK. Good. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. That catches us up. Yeah. So without Perfect. further ado, um, Ovase, I think is going to take us through a live demo right now. We're we're actually going to show three things in in our in our in our demo. Um, we're going to we're going to look at what we have today. Um, we're going to see our single sign-on, as you can see, waiting for us patiently on the screen. We're going to talk about our our MTR solution that 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 we're actually piloting today. Um, we're also going to look at some screen grabs, conceptual screen grabs of where we're going next. We also have uh, some videos that we can share about the bring your own device provisioning process and the VBS provisioning process and what that's going to look and feel like. And Alves can take us through all of those different aspects. So with that, I'll stop talking Alves and uh, you can take the wheel. OK, so you guys can hear me. Yes. Perfect. So um, as you can see, I am I'm just as, as John mentioned, we have a, a robust federated uh, identity man management. So uh, this thing is is built in with that. So I would start by providing my Jabra account, and you will see that I don't, since I have been logged into this account, I'm just simply going to log in uh, to my account without providing any passwords. And just bear in mind that some of the things, they are kind of older experiences, and we will be providing, uh, you know, when, once we are out of this, we will be seeing some screen grabs of where we are going with that. But for now, what we're looking at is, is, the, is the Jabra Plus platform. Uh, what you see over here is what we call um, an organization. So I think as John mentioned, this is a multi-tenant program uh, platform. And I think the more important thing here is that I think it is also going to make life of the AV integrators or partner a lot easier because, you know, with just one Jabra account that you create, whether it is integrated via uh, 
very whether it is integrated via SSO or via using a job, single Jabra account, you are able to get access to multiple organizations. So you are, uh, and similar organizations can be used by organizations to create sim uh, one for test uh, and and one for for production. But at the same time, uh, you can actually create as many organizations as you want to, and also. Once you have created the, those organizations, you can actually are able to invite users to your organization. So you can see yourself maybe part, becoming part of all the different customers that you're supporting. So that's kind of one of the core tenants as we talk about the multiple tenants. Um, and, and as I said, I mean, if I am actually here in, in my organization management, I can actually switch right there, I can select to a particular organization or leave the organization if I don't want to be there. Um, so from that part, what we land on is what we call our inventory. So this is actually a, a tenant or an organization that we have set up and we have asked all of our uh, all of our good friends in Jabra who are using Panacast 50 and they are they have graciously connected uh, this uh, their Panacast 50s to our portal. So now you can see I am I can already see some of the the devices are online and some of them are offline and we can and as as these this status changes is will instantaneously be reflected over here. Um, so let's see what you get when you actually open a device. I think one of the the key things that you will see from an improvement from Express is that we are more device focused, right? So device, Express was more about bulk management but over here. We can interact with single devices and then you can see that I have opened a specific device and I'm able to see all the information about that device. When was it actually, what is the firmware version? What, when was it added, last activity, which computer it is connected to and a bunch of other information. So that's kind of uh, what we are getting here with that. Uh, as far as, all, and what all we also do is that for a single device, you can open up a device and you can start managing the settings for that particular device. And you can actually go on and you it will provide you all the different settings that you actually want to remotely manage. They are available here. You can just make the changes, publish the changes, and you're good to go. So that's kind of what we do when we have to manage one device at a time. But what we are also providing, and, and here just a small warning that this might change a little bit, but what you have here is what we call, we have a concept of, um, of configuration. So you can actually create multiple configurations according to your requirements. You might have some large rooms which should get similar settings or small rooms and, and so on and so forth. Based on that, you can actually go ahead and create your settings, which could mean that you can add, a, you're making a setting for Panacast 50, for example, over here, you know, it's the demo guards, oh, uh, they are kind to me, uh, but they are, so you can actually see they are the same set. You can actually also set which particular frame firmware you actually want to install on these devices, and you can actually go ahead and also change uh, these, this kind of these these device settings here as well. Once you set these thing up, you are able to actually group the devices, and you know I have these groups, and you can assign a configuration to these devices, which to these groups, which means that when you change the setting in one configuration, it will be applied to all the devices that are in this group. As we move to the meeting room concept, we will actually this. Uh, experience will change a little bit and this is something that we are going to show you in the slide deck but uh, uh, but the concept still remains the same you can create configurations attach them to one or many meeting rooms hence you can either change manage one device at a time you can do manage a much, some devices at a time or you can actually manage all of them at a time so that's kind of where we are going with that uh, with that John, I think we can go back to our slide deck and we can take the next steps over there. Okay. And uh, one moment. Answering yeah. a couple of questions in the chat. All very good mm -hmm. questions. Please keep them coming. Um, I did just, I, I wanted to stop here 
just quickly because one question did come up, which I anticipated it would. There was a question around headset management, and that's that's what we're calling personal device management. That will come next after we launch our room management capabilities. So that is next in the pipeline. It'll be it'll be run in the same tool that Oves is showing. We 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 have already done a pilot on that. As a matter of fact, um, we are still building the end user experience around that. Right. So with meeting room management, there's nobody generally sitting in the meeting rooms. An IT admin can manage that from his or her office. Um, and there's a question of can you do that cross country? Sure, you can essentially do it from anywhere, depending on network security. Right. But um, you can manage that from anywhere. There's nobody sitting on the other end. But when you have a person with a personal headset or a personal video device like a P20, they're sitting on the other end and they need to be aware of when those interactions are happening. Say a firmware update is happening. You don't want them to unplug that cable and brick a headset, for example. So we're still building out that new um, um, uh, uh, piece there, which is actually the genesis of our Java Plus 4 desktop touch point, which was touch point number four, I think, on the slide that I've shown six times <laughs> in the, accidentally in this uh, in this in in this forum. So just to just to quickly answer that. And I'll go back to sharing my screen one moment. Before you uh, get back to presenting, one more question popped in there. Is there a roadmap mm -hmm. for managed service providers? This kind of plays into the uh, API nature of the solution, right? But it, or is this going to be mostly targeted at internal IT departments supporting their own users? Sure. Well, it's kind of a two. It depends on the solution that we're going for, um, or that a particular business would be going for. Let me share my screen and actually get to the specific slide that I would like to show. I'm cursing myself for having animations right now. Here we are. Um, in the uh, in this platform and touch points slide, if we're talking about integration with, say, an AV integrator or third party support, um, you can do it a couple of ways. Jobber Plus for admins does allow single sign on, right? So if they have this, they can become part of that organization and they can actually become parts of multiple organizations with single sign on and manage multiple organizations at once. So if they are managing um, different companies, they've got multi-tenant here, they can manage those all at once. Keep me honest here, Oves, if I make any errors. But the Java Plus for Partners is essentially that API platform, which is in the future, right? First, we're getting out our, our Java Plus for Admins room management solution, and then Java Plus for Admins personal device management. In the future, we will also bring out this cloud API platform which will allow integrators to potentially link up into their platform of choice, whether it's something like ServiceNow or whether they've got their own bespoke system, uh, they can manage uh, multiple assets that way across multiple vendors, potentially, even if they bring it all into their same system. I hope that answers the question. Just wanted and I to have, say this, John, that, uh, I mean, we do have, uh, I mean, we are not releasing this platform yet at the moment, but we do have the, the starting of this and we already have done some work around that so if some of you are interested in kind of co-developing and working on that with us uh please reach out and then we can try to see where uh we can actually work together yeah definitely uh you know account managers partner managers on this side anyone you know to get in touch with like me on social media let me know if there's interest out there but certainly um we do have a hand raised, so uh, I have went ahead and unmuted uh, Veronique. I, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, you are, you are, your mic is enabled, so you can unmute and ask your question. Unless it was an accidental hand raise. We'll give you a couple more seconds. All right, we'll, uh, we'll come. I'll go ahead and lower the hand for now, and uh, we'll come back to uh, to that if the question pops back up. Uh, but great interaction, lots of awesome questions coming through. Um, sorry for the interruption, and please charge on. Okay, we'll do it. There are there are quite a few other questions in the chat. I'll start to answer some of those, but I'll let Oveus also go through um, the next steps here in the demonstration. I think it's this one that was next. Is that correct? Yes, so um, I mean, you just saw the experience and I mean, just for for uh, I mean, 
just sharing a little bit with you more, more than I should maybe, but the experience that you actually saw was more geared towards the personal device management, as John mentioned, that we, we as I said, we, we have that solution ready. We're just waiting for the, for the, for the client side and desktop experiences to be ready to before we can roll it out. But we one of the first things that we realize when we are we move from Express to Jabra Plus is that room management and personal device management are totally different experiences. So they require a different section. So that's why we have separated them into our platform as well. Um, you can see that we actually um, are able to define your location so you can actually start to structure your devices into rooms and those rooms you can assign to different locations in a hierarchical fashion. Uh, you can also uh, provide, once you have the location set up for every location, you can also set up the time zone that is in and also provide a maintenance window, which basically means that we do not touch the device uh, in outside of that maintenance window. So if we want to update the firmware, this is the time we are going to do that. Uh, we do have this in the roadmap to actually bring more scheduling around the roadmap, uh, sorry, the firmware update. But that's something that we are starting with in, in, our, in our initial solution, and then we are going to build on top of that. At the same time, you can actually see on the right side, once you are in a location, you're able to see insights of the room. I mean, what are what exactly are how many rooms are online? What is the firmware status around those things and all that? And what are the different activities that will happen in there? Um, uh, and as you can see, it's actually a room status in inventory as well. So it's, it's, it is a real time inventory uh, status. We in the last time I uh, last time I checked, it was we are able to respond within a minute or minute and a half to actually update the status automatically over here, uh, which, by the way, we brought down from six minutes. So we are improving on that one as well. Mm -hmm. And obviously, once you have uh, this list, you can also see the rooms that you are in and also at the same time, the different devices that are in that particular room. And yeah, you know, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes it's actually really interesting for people, but you can always export this inventory and do something else with that. So that's, uh, yeah, John, could you move to the next slide, please? I will. I'm going to ask one question out loud here before I do. I think it's relevant. Question just came through. Is there delegated access to grant specific users access to specific locations, but not others? Uh, one more time, sorry. Uh, the question is around delegating access to specific users for specific mm -hmm. locations. Yes. So absolutely. So I think that this is actually one of the other important. I think they most probably I touched this in one of the next slides, but but this is actually uh, so if you are, for instance, in Denmark, you are able to uh, assign a user saying OVS, for example, is only able to see and manage the devices in Denmark and so on and so forth. So absolutely, that's something that we are trying to to, uh, to add into our uh, initial uh, product. As I said, a more fine granular authorization will come as we actually grow with this platform, but this is something that we are, will be offering in our first solution, just uh, uh, access on the location level. Um, so, but just if you continue the journey, you know, after you have set up the location that you can, you have the rooms, when you open the rooms, you're able to see all the devices that are in the room and you can see that we can actually perform different actions on those devices. You can restart a device, you can update the firmware of a device from there and other actions that we are. So you will keep on uh, getting more functionality for each individual device from here. Uh, if you see on the right side, I think one thing that we have realized is that we also, uh, we have this running joke that, you know, personal devices versus meeting room devices. And I always say, hey, uh, meeting room devices are also personal devices, but they're very personal to the administrators. So that's why we actually really want to provide that kind of real time um, experience to uh, to the administrator. So whenever you're performing an action, we want this to be very connected. It's very responsive and actually uh, so that, you know, we can provide you with the same confidence that at the, at the action that you are performing is happening on the device itself. So that's kind of where we are 
we are this is the experience we are looking for so that you will never have to go to a room i mean who wants to leave the comfy chair okay john can we move to the next sure okay so uh, as, as i mentioned i mean you can actually get a lot of information about the device itself so you were in a space from that you were getting an overview from that overview you actually entered a room where you were able to see the device itself that the room contains and from that you can actually navigate to a particular device and from that point onwards you can actually perform different actions you can view detailed information about the device and as you I, as i saw show you in my demo you are also able to change the settings for that particular individual uh, device so that's kind of the, the workflow right here for locations to uh, to rooms and rooms to devices. That's kind of the experience we are looking for here. John, could you move to the next, please? OK, so this is the final uh, bit of this is what we call the mass management. So I, I show you how you can actually create a configuration. So uh, we know I mean Panacast 50 and Panacast BBS are pretty intelligent devices and they most probably need set different settings for different type of rooms so you can be actually provide you with the opportunity to create multiple different configurations or setting profiles if you can want to call them and in that you can actually define different settings if you are in a huddle room you might want to turn on the the, 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 the dynamic composition and so on and so forth and from that point onward you can actually assign that configuration to all your hotel rooms so you don't need to go to individual devices and change the settings uh, for that and this is where, where we will actually let you create a configuration and let you attach that to a particular uh, room and that's how you mask this is the, how we are providing the mass management of devices in Java plus yeah I think for that, this is kind of ends this high level. Um, and just to be sure that you guys know, I mean, we do have most of this implemented on our uh, dev, and we can actually uh, we actually debated should we do a live demo on dev, but I mean, we realized that maybe it's safer to uh, do it uh, like that. So, so we are kind of uh, really uh, working hard to actually get it uh, over to you. Awesome. This is there's a lot that's poured in through the chat. Um, and I know John is working to answer a couple of them as they go. Um, so I'm going to pop a couple questions out there uh, as well to see if we, you know, some of these I think are pretty quick, easy answers. Uh, some might be a little more loaded, right? But one is that we don't utilize Panacast in our environment, only headsets. First, let me address that sentence. We'll help you out with the Panacast side. Please get in touch. We can solve that problem easily. Um, would there be an advantage for us to migrate off of Express into Jabra Plus, Plus at that future timeline where we are looking at personal device management? Yeah, I think it depends on the feature set that you're looking for. So right now, there we don't have the personal device management solution for Jabra Plus. Stay with Express. If it's working for you, that's fantastic. It's mm -hmm. a great piece of software for, for, for what it does. And it was one of the first to market with the personal device management. That's good. I think we're going to make it pretty enticing, though, for you to migrate to the new solution as we bring out more features. As we said, the room management piece does come first, but personal management, personal device management, the headsets and P20s come next. And um, we're hoping to build a proposition that's going to be enticing, as I as I mentioned, and I think you're going to want to move at some point. And getting back to the question before, we will have um, paths and a clear methodology for moving from Express in, into the new system before we do anything like forcing people to move from one system to the next. It's all going to be very, very clear about how to do so. And I think you answered this out loud or not out loud in the chat, so I'll give it a chance to answer it out loud, uh, John, but uh, asking about if admins will have access to people count and usage data um, or is that going to be a part of the partners only with third party support? Uh, right. So. Oh, I'm sorry. No, uh, go ahead. I mean, okay. Yeah, I can yeah, take I, that. Yeah, sure. Or John, as you wish. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. 
So um, absolutely, I think this is, I mean, one of the one of the selling points, or I mean, very major features of uh, our our products. And absolutely, this is something that we want to do. Uh, again, as I said, you know, just say Rome was not built in a day. Uh, in, so I mean, that's basically where we are. Or sometimes I think maybe we should have built Rome uh, and not, not built this thing. But uh, having said that, I think this is. Um, John showed you these four pillars actually in, in the beginning of the presenta presentation. These are the four MVP pillars, if you may, that we really want to make sure that 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 we are addressing these four first. But right on the corner on the fourth one, there is an insight pillar, which I mean, we just basically hid for the sake of simplicity. So it's not <laughs> something that oh, you can see. I like, did add this back in because I thought this right question would the come right up. Side. So that's. Yeah kind of where we are going. So, I mean, right after we are done with releasing these four pillars, the next, this the highest priority for us is to be able to provide the insights and, uh, and alerts to, uh, to, to, uh, to the users. Just wanted to say one more thing is that we are definitely going to provide this via AMS, but we are also want to, we do not think that these insights are just good to look at but we want these to be usable so we will definitely provide you with the facility to to be able to use these insights via an api so that you can download it put it into other resource management systems and try to reason with that as well so that's this is why these things are we really want to make sure that we we solve this problem right and this is why i and as i said if you guys have any any insights any questions i mean please reach out to us and this is something that we are starting to explore yeah so just to just to kind of repeat that once again when this does become generally available to the public we are bringing forth based on our four pillars a way to meaningfully manage the jabra devices right so that you can do all of the basics it works well uh, whether you're working with team or zoom uh, and it also works well with say teams pro management portal it'll all be very It'll, it'll be a very solid way to meaningfully manage your devices. Then on top of that, we also need to be able to remotely manage all of those in-room settings to provide insights, to provide alerts. We've got uh, we've got a really ambitious roadmap that I'm hoping we can execute upon. Um, we, we're, we're just really excited to get this basic management system out the door so we can start doing that. A quick reminder um, that this is recorded and that if you did a, a couple people came in late they're trying to get caught up in the comments etc um we will be just like if you go to jabra.com slash technically speaking we will make this recording available uh, in a few days time it should show up there so you can get caught up catch up on the chat if you have time and then and see the earlier part of the conversation um a couple other questions that have popped in they're similar to each other and i think the answer is kind of similar in both cases i think for us maybe it's a little more of uh, feedback to take, but something to put out there um, is, is there going to be a uh, a cloud-based version of the Jabra Plus app for end users rather than just Jabra Plus for admins, right? For for those scenarios where someone maybe is, has their devices locked down and can't, can't install an app on it. Um, is that in the works at all? That's certainly on the radar. So we're talking thin clients and Chromebooks and also sectors where um, we don't where they don't want additional apps on their machines, whether it's financial or call centers. Yes, certainly on the radar um, comes in a phase two or three, but um, it it is certainly there for us. We've heard that loud and clear from from several of our of our major customers. Next one, as an administrator, can we have transcript of what is being said on any conversation? And I'll, I'll jump in before I even answer and say that's likely going to be something where you'd look to the platform uh, that you're using, Teams, Zoom, for that kind of information, right? This is more about managing the fleet of devices, their health, rather than the nature of the meetings themselves. But if there's any color you want to add to that that, that comment, John or, or Avase, feel free to jump in on that. Gosh, I think it was a trick question. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, but but I mean, I totally agree with what you said. I'm mean, absolutely. I mean, we would strive hard to not get access to that information because this is not why we are building this. This is not the purpose of that particular platform, and yeah. and the purpose, as as you mentioned, team and and uh, Zoom are the right platforms to get that sort of information. So we'll we'll really work hard not to get that access. 
another one that was kind of related to what are we developing um, and from the uh, access of this information is there, there was a question about will Jabra Plus uh, be, or are there plans for it to be made as an on-prem version for, for companies that are, are not really going cloud, uh, that they're keeping most things on-prem? Um, and I mean, we've, we've seen the here and now, so I guess this is more of a question about future plans, but yeah. Right. Yeah, again, it, we have heard that from several customers. Uh, it is on the radar. <clears throat> it is down the road. Uh, I can't I can't say when. Um, we do have our on-prem express 1.0 versions, right? That, that 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 several customers use now. Those will stay in existence um, for some time yet. Um, but it is something that we are aware of that the Jabber Plus cloud solution wouldn't necessarily solve for some of our customer base. Now, with that said, the reason why we have moved to a cloud solution is that um, that 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 really is where most industries are headed. Even some of the slower movers, like the financial industries, like 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 the call centers, they do use platforms like LogiSync, which is also a cloud-based platform. They do use um, things like Salesforce, which is a cloud-based based platform. That's not to be tone deaf. Of course, there are needs for an on-prem solution, but that's also why we're uh, leaning into the cloud-based solution first. Yeah. Just one thing I want to add to this, what John said, is that <clears throat> one of the things that we also really want to focus is how secure and how enterprise ready we can make our cloud platform. So we just want to venture into that first. And obviously, absolutely, as I said, you know, we will be needing uh, some sort of on-rate presence and we are trying to exploring ways how we can solve that without a platform, for example, you know, with um, yeah, I'm just going to stop too much. So basically, yes, we are going to talk, you know, explore different other ways of solving that problem. But as I said, definitely uh, having an on-prem version is on the cards as well, uh, depending on where we end up. Uh, before we move to a couple other questions here and there, they've still been coming in. This is awesome. I love to, to hear, see the interest. Um, well, let me just remind you, you were taking them in the chat. Or raise your hand, uh, and if you if it's more of a complex question that you want to kind of have a back and forth on, feel free to put the hand up and let's chat. Um, the other part of that too is maybe it's just feedback based on what you've seen or answers you've gotten that you want to throw our way. We're listening. This is a great time to give that feedback. Uh, so please raise your hand and and, uh, and offer that up as well. In the meantime, there was a question out there about timelines. Knew that would knew the, we knew those were coming. Uh, timeline specifically about the personal devices. Um, you know, they're saying as an example, is it Q2 of 2024? Um, and I think you know, one thing we should again go back and just remind is that we're 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 at the, in this technically speaking session, we are talking about something as opposed to other ones that is not yet out in the market in GA, um, but that you should look for in its initial release phase in the first half, roughly of 2024. That's step one, and as John and, and Oasis mentioned, personal peripherals are beyond step one. Uh, if there's any more color, John or Oasis, that you want to add to that, feel free to jump in with that. No, I I think that's the that that's fair to say. If we had a date, we'd be happy to give it to you right now. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned to this space. We will continually update uh, with our public facing documentation about when things become available but trust us we are also very focused on bringing that personal device management story out as well um and then one in there uh has to do with with cost and comp uh, like express so uh, is plus going to be complimentary like express or a license fee associated with it any details on that so when we do go ga general availability with the four pillars and the and the and the meaningful robust manageability solution that's going to be there right there's 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 no cost for that i cannot tell you what the future brings we you know we have a lot of great ideas in our roadmap and we just have to assess um what what's coming next and um play it by ear from there but this what we're showing you what Ovase has been showing you for the four basic pillars um that's 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 that that base tier level will be free of free of charge. Awesome. 
Um, and then we have, uh, okay, this is a good one to go back to that Azure IoT cloud-based um, portion of, of how this is being built. Will the cloud service be run out of a U.S. data center or will there be other data centers around the world? Right, so at launch, it's actually going to be run in Western Europe. Um, okay. That's 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 the first data center. We have had questions about additional data centers, and again, one of one of the pieces um, that is on our radar. Um, we've also been asked to um, we'll we'll just run in government data centers. So we are aware of the need to to uh, propagate this out to data centers of various types and various locations. Awesome. And a comment in there from Tom uh, saying financial services here. We are moving to cloud-based and it's great. So there you go. That's 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 good feedback on the cloud-based conversation. Still doesn't negate the fact that there are on-prem requirements for some organizations in some situations, but it's good to good to hear the financial services industry is making those strides. So <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that feedback. And we're gonna take that one example <laughs> and say the whole financial industry has now, said, has now spoken. You, you just made an architect very, very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. I, I think we're actually pulling up to the end of the question list here. I think we got most of them addressed. It's possible a couple slipped through the cracks because they were coming in hot and heavy for a for a few minutes. But um, before we wrap this up, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen back out uh, really quickly here. And we will resume from where I left off. Um, I think we'll resume from where I left off. Maybe I'll just jump right to it. So we're, we're already in the questions phase. I should have put this up a little earlier. Um, I always like to change up the wording on here and try to shift the blame to someone else when it's super cheesy, uh, in the, as in this case. Uh, but the thing I want to call out here, since we've already been asking questions, is we've got a little QR code down at the bottom of the form where we kind of would appreciate it. If you've got time, give us some feedback, not just on how we did with uh, presenting and talking about the topic, but if the topic was useful to you, um, judging by the interaction, I'm guessing it was for the most part uh, to, to all you, but still any feedback you can give, things you want to hear as a follow-up, do you want to see us talking about this again as it develops in more detail a few months from now, um, uh, anything like that you can provide is, is extremely helpful there. So snag the QR code if you've got time to provide that feedback. Um, with that, we do have another question pop up in here. Are you guys planning features like pre-provisioning? or maybe zero touch provisioning is a better term, uh, so that if someone buys 200 VBS units and wants them configured as soon as when they are connected to the network for the first time. Uh, I think the short answer is yes. Again, something on our radar, bulk provisioning is what we're labeling it. Um, the, it won't be available as such in GA. Um, Ovase, is there anything you'd, you'd like to add to that one? Uh, no, absolutely. I mean, as you said, I mean, again, if I refer to the to the same journey, actually, I think the, the, the four pillars, I mean, the, the pillars on the left side is actually well provisioning. So absolutely something that we, I mean, it's more than on the radar, I would say. So we actually have looked into it and we have looked into, I, I usually joke with people, I have an epic for that. So that's basically the state of that is more than, uh, on the radar, but I mean, we are, uh, we are, these, these are one of few things that we are actively looking at. Uh, no timeline uh, commitments and everything, but again, one of those things that we, we have been actively looking at. And, and with just as, not to put it into the MVP. Yeah, and just to add to that, um, I've, I've sprinkled it in there, but we have started to pilot some of this with a couple of, um, with a couple of customers. And, um, they are good customers and they have many devices. And that was one of the first questions they had as well. So you're not the only one and it's really ringing loud and clear in our ears that um, it's something that we'll need to address. It's a great problem to have if someone is buying dozens or hundreds of our devices. So I appreciate the feedback. Definitely. Um, I did uh, get a request for that QR code for the next session on there that's on screen. I will go back in a moment to the previous QR code. Um, but the, the, the that, um, you know, early access it was just mentioned um, by John. If if there's interest, if that thing sounds like something you think your organization would be a good fit for and you're wanting to know how to kind of connect on that, you know, there's more information to come on that as that 
makes its way out into the, uh, a wider audience. So bring that feedback to your account manager or your partner manager. Again, th throw it in my ear if you don't know of anyone else. Um, and, and we'll connect the dots in, internally as, as that nears. Um, but it, this, this kind of these questions and the thoughts and the feedback are extremely helpful. As you can see, we're coming to market in the near term with this, with this initial goal. Um, and that's, that's where we start with, right, in this, in this journey. But there's still much more to be done. Lots of feedback is being garnered in the meantime. So the more that you, br you bring in, uh, we're very appreciative of that. And it's, it's super helpful on the journey. Uh, and then we have a couple of the QR codes posted into the chat here. Thank you so much for doing that. It makes it easier for me, Rex. Appreciate it. Um, and uh, there we go. All right. Any other questions? I'll give it time for those hands to be thrown up. Anything at all before we, we uh, stick a fork in this one, as they say. Okay. I don't see any any hands going up. I appreciate you all that took the time to flip on the camera and be here and putting all of those questions into the chat. Hope this was useful for you as, as we do every month. And again, uh, if you have follow-up that you want to throw our way on this topic, use that survey right there to give us that feedback so that we can reach back out to you or we'll know that you want to hear more about this as it develops. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time to fill that out. Thank you all for being here. And since I will not be able to wish all happy holidays and happy break and happy whatever uh, next month, uh, I will say it now. Enjoy, enjoy the holidays. Enjoy the end of the year. I cannot wait to see you all. Um, I would say in January, but there's a chance that I may not be on the January, technically speaking, sadly, as I uh, will be at ISE in, in, uh, in Spain. So um, but if you're going to be on that session, it'll be a great one in terms of the uh, the value packs that are coming and have come over the last couple of months to these video devices that are going to be manageable in this new platform. So thank you all so much for being on. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much to John and Obase for taking the time to present this new solution, Jabra Plus, Jabra Plus for admins. Show us a little bit under the hood. Uh, even a little bit of what's coming. And uh, and I hope that uh, we'll see you all on the next session. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thank you.